Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to do some real geeky techno stuff uh, regarding why with the advancement of digital SLRs, how we're able to get higher ISOs, sensitivity of your images, and yet still get lower noise uh, coming into your, your cameras. And I'm also going to tell you a little bit about how the Fuji camera or Fuji sensors are just completely different from all the other ones. to know is your sensor. Your sensor in the back of your camera has got lots of pixels. Well they're not pixels, pixels are the things that make up the image. You have photodiodes at the back of your sensor and in front of those photo diodes you have these which gather the light and focus it onto the uh, photodiode. And what's happening with um, each progression of uh, cameras is that the micro lenses on top of the photodiode are getting bigger or there's less of a gap in between the, the micro lenses meaning that you get more uh, more light coming straight in onto the actual photodiode part the bit that captures the light so as the gap uh, as the distance between the micro lenses decreases inversely the sensitivity of your camera goes up or is, it has a greater ability. The other thing is that in your actual camera sensor there are I think double the amount of green sensors than there are red and blue. So effectively all our sensors are very simple, they're just RGB, red, green, blue. And that's how they figure out the light, all the lights, that, all the colours that we can get from our camera, whether it's 65 thousand different tones or 65 million different tones. It is all just from red, green, blue. I don't think any sensors yet have a CK M, Y, C, K, Y, M, N? Whatever. You know, the cyan, magenta, black, and something else. And the reason why there's a uh, double the amount of green is because uh, the human eye is, I don't know whether it's the case that we're more sensitive green or whether we're less sensitive green, more you can see the red color. So you need less sensors to pick up the red and this is you don't to see to see red or not. And generally the human eye is focused in the kind of middle of the optical spectrum uh, around the kind of green area. And that's why we have infrared, which means uh, at the big uh, wave band, uh, that becomes invisible. And at the blue end we have uh, ultraviolet, which means it's really short and our eyes can't see it, so you can see more in the middle. But generally, uh, everyone can see red to blue and then green's in the middle, roughly, somewhere. Now, in the back of your camera, you uh, in the past, it would just be block, 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 block of pixels. And above that would be block, 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 block. And it would be maybe a whole line of green, and then above it would be red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. And then a whole line of green, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. And that was fine, but people could really see um, artifacts coming in their images when they did that. So they then developed the buyer bear pattern, which is effectively the same kind of thing, but roughly instead of having a block, 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 it's block, 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 like this. And that's worked absolutely fine. But what Fuji have done is that they have done it in a slightly different way with their new. EXR sensors, which they're using in their smaller cameras, might use it in their digital SLR soon, we don't know. They're doing it all in the diagonal plane because of some reason that they said. Can't remember what the reason was, uh, but they're doing it in the diagonal plane because they think that's better. That'd be the reason. And now the, the most up-to-date things is that they're actually combining the colours together. So it'd be um, green, 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 and then instead of red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, it'd be red, red. Blue, blue, red, red, blue, blue. And the reason for this is uh, twofold. One is that they're now able to do it so that doing it that way they can get a greater dynamic range and they can also increase the sensitivity. Having the two double colours, so green, green, blue, blue, red, red, together means that they can effectively combine the sensitivity of both of those pixels, photo diodes, whatever you want to call them, uh, together to get double the amount of information. But at the same time, because out of each diode, like so you have 10 million of them in the back of your camera, um, a little wire comes out, and they are now able to control how much 
stuff comes out of it and goes into your memory thing. So effectively whenever one sensor has got really full it will stop that uh, data coming out and the other one will still get, get brighter. So effectively that's their way of getting a greater dynamic range. In the past what they did is they had effectively two types of diodes. So they'd have a big one like that and they'd have a little one which would just kind of be inside it. And the little one was a quarter of the size of the big photo diode and that was cool that was cool that worked absolutely fine then they updated that by giving the pulling that little photo diode out and giving it its own micro lens on top again this is real geeky stuff so you probably don't need to know about it but it's, it's some of you might find it interesting so that's where with the for example the fuji s5 pro which is renowned for having a huge dynamic range much more than what other cameras can can get it's because they effectively had two types of sensors on the one thing. Two, t two types of photodiodes on the one thing. So one, a small one and a big one. The big one would get lots of light and be able to give you a higher eye. Uh, well, if you had the same amount of light coming in, only a small amount of light would hit the, the small pixel and a lot of light would hit the big pixel. I mean, the small pixel would be what they would take for taking all the details about the bright areas. For example, the stuff which would normally be blown out by the big sensor, um, like the sky, uh, the flashes, the lights, whatever, the smaller pixel would send that data through because it's only captured a quarter of the amount of that data compared to what the big one would. The big one would be used for uh, getting all the detail from the shadows where it's obviously sucked in more information and that's how it got that bigger dynamic range. But affected by using two different sizes of pixels, diodes, whatever you want to call it. And now with the new EXR sensor they're doing it where they've combined so that the two sensors have or the two photodiodes are beside each other they have the same amount of they're the same size so they're both quite big but yet now it's just more of an electronic thing where they're stopping the amount of data coming through from one of the pixels before the other one rather than having this the same thing don't quite know how it works in fact I don't think anybody really knows how it works because I've looked all over the internet and there's nowhere that really tells you in layman terms uh, how to actually understand what the heck is going on. Because you've got to remember this is a microscopic level, it's absolutely tiny. So yeah, so that, that's just a little thing uh, about some sensor technology and, and that's so all to do with micro lenses. So effectively light comes in, goes through all the glass, jiggle, 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 and then it hits the sensor. But in your sensor, there's like microscopic bits of glass in front of the actual photodiode, and they focus the light back into the photodiode. And uh, this the gap between the micro lenses is getting smaller, so the lenses are getting bigger, so they're sucking more light in, making us be able to have higher ISOs with our cameras. Easy. Oh, another thing, just to, just if you're wondering where to print stuff off, I, I put quite a few photos onto a website called Photobox. The link for it is in my YouTube page. And uh, anyway, I thought I'd go print some of my pictures out because I, I barely ever print them out. It's really bad of me, I know. But I thought, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go. And I am well impressed. I've got them A4 size. And I got them printed so that they were not cropped, but they were shrunk to fit. And uh, at A4 size, um, I've, I've obviously got them in their plastic sheets because I want to keep them good. But they, uh, that's of uh, Kim. And uh, that is one f from the car shoot and another one from car shoot. And there's one of uh, kind of a nude one of Jenna and vampire stuff, and there's one of some strippers which I did. But anyway, um, I, I was really impressed with it. In fact, that's, that's probably still my my favourite one. Um, the sharpness, the colour accuracy, it's pretty much exactly what I saw on my computer screen. Granted, everyone's got different computer screens, they all come out differently, uh, but photo box, I think that's what it is, I think, photo box gallery. I would highly recommend uh, uh, getting your stuff printed off there. I think for each one of these, uh, it was about £2 off. Uh, well, that's all for today. See you guys later. Cheers, bye.